welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 234th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about transformation and the transformation process. But before we get to that, today's petit plaisir is an everyday dinner, a recipe that I actually showed on my Instagram and Instagram stories last week. And it's not a recipe that's actually on the blog yet. It was shared a handful of years ago, one part of it, um, but in our big blog remodel a few years ago, it was not available anymore. And so I have a recipe that you can make in 30 minutes or less, and it's full of flavor, very simple, and a lot of health benefits. I'll be sharing that with you at the end of this episode, but let's get into today's topic. We're talking about becoming your best self, embracing the transformation process. And I want to begin with a quote that inspired this topic for me. It's from the salt, fat, heat, and acid documentary that's inspired by the best-selling book by Samin Nasrat and then her docu-series that has since aired on Netflix. And she stated in the episode that was about heat, quote, heat is the element of transformation. It is what takes raw to cooked, flabby to firm, pale to golden brown. Now, I'll come back to that quote here in a second, but if you're reading this post on the blog, you're looking at an image of a bed that has butterflies carved, one in the footboard and one in the headboard. And so I want to take a brief moment to talk about butterflies because the topic of butterflies has been abundant here on the podcast as well as the Simply Luxurious Life blog. Once in 2011 with the blog post titled What Butterflies Have Taught Me, again in 2016, The Butterfly Moment in Life, Don't Wait, Just Live Well, that was in episode 160 of this podcast. And the first post was actually posted in 2010, titled With Balance and Determination. Now, after reading these past posts, you will quickly see what my long-held fascination with this transformative insect with this large pair of brilliantly uniquely colored wings is, as well as my dog Norman's fascination. Now, let me begin this conversation by sharing an interesting note. Caterpillars are associated with both butterflies and moths. I think most of us know that, but I think it's important to remember that. And that there are actually, and I did not know this one, there are actually far more moths than butterflies. In fact, only 6 to 11% of caterpillars turn into butterflies as opposed to 89 to 94% turning into moths. But often the opposite is believed to be true because moths are nocturnal and butterflies fly around and about during the day, which is when we often see them. Now, taking a mere couple of weeks, sometimes months, and for a few butterflies years, the process of transformation or metamorphosis, while some may describe it as beautiful due to its magnificence and eventual outcome, it actually can be quite odd to the onlooker who's a layman not typically majestic aesthetically and perhaps to some kind of gross. I won't describe all that takes place, but I do have a link to the detailed process on the show notes today. But yeah, part of this process is kind of icky. And I use this elementary term only to further my next point because because I know and I, I know you can appreciate that what Mother Nature is enabling to happen from that caterpillar changing into a butterfly is nothing short of awesome. And when you have the courage to step forward into any kind of transformation that you are seeking, to cultivate a life that welcomes contentment, to let go of what is no longer supporting the person you wish and somewhere within you consciously and unconsciously knows you can become, there will be stages that are, for lack of a better word, icky, uncomfortable, frustrating, doubt-filled, and maybe even painful, meaning figuratively or emotionally speaking. But that is part of the necessary process of transformation. Last weekend, I posted an image on Instagram, and I've included it on the show notes. For those of you that are listening to this episode, it is an image of my new mahogany bed frame, which is complete with a footboard and headboard. And at the top of each, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, is a carefully carved butterfly. 
I call it, not surprisingly, my butterfly bed. And as I shared in my Instagram post, it was a find at a secondhand store for a price that was far below what it should have been marked. But this treasure had gone unnoticed for many months, and the owner of the shop was eager to move it out. Now, knowing the carpenter, or as I like to call him an artist, which is much more an apt of a word, Steve Arment, now he is someone who is a dear acquaintance with my family in Willow County, and I knew immediately this was a treasure when I came across it. And I, without a blink of an eye, welcomed this piece of art into my home. Now, I'll share more of why I jumped at this chance to bring this bed into my my uh, my home at the end of today's episode. But this ties in to what much of the Simply Luxurious Life's new book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Day's Extraordinary and Becoming Your Best Self, is about. Because it's about the transformation that we are choosing to travel because it's a singular journey. And the goal is to attain and live each day well and thus create our best life, which is a life of contentment, a life of realizing your true potential. And it's a book inspired in in many ways by my choosing to step into the stages of transformation. And there were moments that were icky. Now, this is not a memoir of a book. I don't want you to think this is a memoir. It's not at all a memoir. It's just inspired by different incidents in my life. And then I dive into the investigation and then the research and then share with readers what I have found along that journey. There are countless blog posts on the internet about the idea of transformation, personal transformation, and even books about this process. But I think It's written about and talked about so much because it's worth looking at. It's worth examining. And so today in our conversation, I want to take a concise look at the realities and the benefits of the process. But being concise, we're also going to look very, very closely at what this process looks and feels like. Now, when I heard that quote by Samin Nasrat that I shared at the beginning of today's episode... An image of a butterfly is shared on the screen in this particular episode, which is all about heat, the actually the fourth episode of this four-part series. And it's an image briefly of a butterfly struggling to free itself from its cocoon, and eventually it breaks free and becomes what we know to be a beautiful butterfly. I press pause when it came on the screen and she's talking and sharing that particular quote, and I rewound it and I listened again to what she was saying. I listened that yet again, and I proceeded to write down the words that I've shared with you. Admittedly, she is talking immediately about food, but she could just as well be talking about any change we seek in our own lives. In order to cultivate change, we must create friction, which causes heat, which then mobilizes the ability for the change we seek to occur. So now I'd like to get into the five parts of the transformation process. The first one is give yourself permission to become more. Here is a quote from the recently released book, Becoming by Michelle Obama. There is a power in allowing yourself to be known and heard, in owning your unique story, in using your authentic voice. And there's a grace in being willing to know and hear others. This, for me, is how we become. Whether it is society or our own limiting thoughts, Obstacles of the transformation we know vaguely awaits us should we choose to step forward to change will flash before us repeatedly, attempting to thwart any decision to proceed. But we must be daring. You must be brave because as former First Lady Michelle Obama shares in her new memoir and directly in this quote that I just shared, when you choose to become more, you empower not only yourself, but now you have the ability to help others step into their fullest potential as well. So that's number one of the transformation process. Give yourself permission to become more. Number two, be, give yourself permission to be, be content. Sometimes, especially as women, we need to hear that our actions will help others in order to give ourselves permission to do something that will improve our lives and make us more content. But in this particular step, I want to give you permission and thus for you to give yourself permission to let yourself be truly content just for you. Each of us is living different lives. Each of us has different responsibilities. And that is why your journey will be unique. And only you will truly know what you can let go of, what you need to remain committed to, and what you no longer need to be a part of. But your happiness will spill over if it comes from a place of authenticity, of an opportunity to improve the world and its contentment, which includes you. 
There will always be shamers, guilt trippers, and fear mongers to attempt to put you back in your place. And I put that in air quotes. I know you can't see me do that, but <laughs> that's what I was doing, which is why you need to find your support system. And, and, and the Simply Luxurious Life destination is, is here for you too for that. But first, be your own support system and give yourself permission to be content. A better you will help cultivate a better world. Now, before we get to the final three of how this transformation process works, I'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor. For years, the co-founders of Holly and Tanager searched for the perfect backpack tote to carry their items in an organized manner. Now, without ever sacrificing fashion for function, their timeless designs display a bold desire to accommodate a woman's lifestyle effortlessly day after day. Now, they have designed not only the professional backpack tote, which will live up to your needs of the on-the-go, in-the-know, jet-setting, trend-setting, all-around extraordinary woman, but they've also designed a handful of of other handbags, from the commuter tote that will handle all of your must-have items and then some, the convertible belt bag, which doubles as a clutch for an effortless transition from day to night, the champion wallet, which includes zippered interior pockets, card holder pockets, an ID pocket, and an interior sleeve big enough to hold your smartphone while doubling as a clutch, as well as their cross-body clutches, which are my favorite, the Explorer and the Companion Mini. I love the Explorer especially because... It will hold your everyday essentials and also has a versatile style that doubles as a clutch. Be sure to stop by their website and take a look at all of their extraordinary everyday handbags you won't see every day on their website. Now, for Simple Sophisticate listeners, on your first order, you can receive 15% off. Simply go to hollyandtanager.com slash simple and use the promo code simple to save that 15%. Again, that's hollyandtanager, H-O-L-L-Y, A-N-D, T-A-N-A-G-E-R dot com slash simple. And don't forget to use the promo code simple. Now, as we get back into this list, I want to talk about number three, which is something you're probably going to have to do regularly or more often, more than once at least throughout this journey of transformation. And it's to remind yourself of your unique strengths and past successes. I want to share a quote from Jenny S. Ditzler, who is the author of Your Best Year Yet. And she states, by staying in touch with your accomplishments, you build true, authentic confidence to move on, to make new things happen. Appreciating your success enables you to take responsibility for your greatness so that your life is about finding ways to use your own gifts to make a difference. And I think that's the key to keep in mind is we're going to get stuck every once in a while. But so long as we can remember that we do have something unique to offer and that it's something we're going to give to the world, that in, in large part is a huge fuel to keep us going. When we are in the middle of transforming, doubt inevitably will creep in. We begin to wonder if we really do have something the world needs and whether our investment of time and resources will be worth it. In these moments, take time to slow down and remind yourself of both your unique strengths and your past successes, those actions and abilities that inspired you to begin the journey you are currently on. Perhaps you need to check in with that dear friend of yours that is your constant cheerleader if you cannot seem to remember your awesomeness because it is there. And once you remember these truths about yourself, a deep breath will emerge. Your chin will rise just enough for you to look forward so that you can keep on striving. So that's number three. Remind yourself of your unique strengths and past successes. Number four is understand that constructing a solid foundation begins with instability. Your world will feel as though it is shaking at times, unstable. Some of the previous strongholds, perhaps financial or social, will be rattled. They will be less stable than they were previously, but they're rattling because you're trying to actually strengthen them in the long run. You will feel emotionally drained and tapped to find an ounce of energy to power through at times. You may have moments of floods of tears, anger due to disrespect or lack of understanding. But as long as you keep your composure in public, seek out those you trust for comfort and reassurance in private. Take time to find balance and strength and know that these moments are part of the building a more solid foundation. Case in point, I was recently watching a segment on Oregon's public broadcasting, which spotlighted the building of Portland's Japanese gardens on the Oregon art beat. And in this segment, the first natural design one sees when you enter this garden before hiking up to the full Japanese natural space are the dry stone walls. 
The architect in this episode explained that this architectural approach of stacking rocks without cement or any other binder, ironically, enables the wall to become stronger with each shake of the earth, each shift of the ground beneath it. Why? Because as the earth moves, the rocks begin to settle more and more firmly into their place. The key is to have chosen the pieces carefully when first designing the wall. Which ones go where? You are the architect of your life. And so long as you trust your journey and understand your unique gifts with each shake that comes from society, from a critic, from individuals who challenge what you are doing, it will ultimately only strengthen your foundation. But at first, it may feel unstable as it is new. So understand that that's normal, but that's actually what's going to make you stronger in the long run. So that's number four. Understand that constructing a solid foundation begins with instability. Number five, remain open to opportunities you initially may not recognize. Opportunities often take time to materialize and thus for us to recognize as opportunities when they first dance across our paths because we are seeking or traveling down a path that is new to us as we have chosen the path of transformation away from our previous existence and toward a new one opportunities will be different and thus look different. Now, much like continuing to date the same type of person over and over again, we cannot expect to seize the same type of opportunity over and over again and expect a different result. It seems obvious, but it is hard in practice initially because we have become trained to see opportunities that we now know do not serve us for our new journey, which is why we must remain open to opportunities that may be unrecognizable initially. How? What I have learned is that opportunities often take time to fully take shape. In fact, we have to do the homework beforehand, then take a risk oftentimes, and then be patient to see how it will all work out. The most important step is doing our homework beforehand. In other words, what investments have the best chance of helping us to attain the outcome we seek? Instead of seeking the option that will give us an outcome quickly, but not the best outcome, we need to be patient and simply let it unfold once we've put forth the effort. Eventually, the opportunity will become clear, but along the way, it will be foreign as we are a new student in this particular language. So that's number five, remain open to opportunities you initially may not recognize. Now, this past summer, I spoke often about my trip to France. It was a trip, while not my first to the country, that is most memorable for a long list of reasons. And it was on this trip that a butterfly came so close to my face on multiple occasions, it just felt truly surreal. As we sat down for lunch throughout my week at the Provence Cooking School, the butterflies would dance down the center of this arced table overlooking the valley in Vaison la Romaine. I would catch the eye of a fellow student immediately after it would happen, and we would just smile in adoration and disbelief at what we had just seen. No words needed to be exchanged. Of course, I had my own reasons for smiling, much of what is explained here, but It was when I came across my new bed that I was not shopping for. In fact, I was shopping for a round pedestal dining room table that I continue to shop for that I smiled again spontaneously. If you too are fascinated with butterflies, you will have your own reasons for smiling when you see them as we are each choosing to travel along our own transformative path. But I find my bed to be even more now a place of support and encouragement. And the transformation in my, my most private sanctuary is a welcome change as a new chapter of sorts begins. It is a curious feeling sharing a creative piece of yourself with the world. In this case, in my case, a book which shares many different personal details. And as many readers have coined, it is somewhat like a book baby giving that to the world. You you work on it for years, you read it and reread it and reread it multiple times, but it isn't until it is put out into the world that you feel particular feelings at their most visceral level, such as vulnerability, hope, relief, just to name a few. The relief is one of emotional expenditure, and perhaps the bed came at the perfect time with its comfort provided because I have slept longer and more deeply in the past two weeks than I have for some time. In many ways, I feel like I'm recharging. And it's back to that point of recharging. Heat is created when we choose to take action. The action may not be understood by everyone during the process of transformation. But when you trust your journey, when you understand yourself, when you emerge from this transformation that will take time, you will be strong enough to explain, introduce, and share your newly transformed, beautiful self to the world. 
So I encourage you to step into that transformation process. It is a choice and it's going to take courage, but it is not permanent. And it is something that may have some icky moments, but what is happening is the process of getting to the destination you have done your homework on. You are, 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 are more aware of will best fit you and what you have to uniquely offer the world. So have patience with yourself, I guess is the biggest part, but also trust yourself and trust this journey and know that there is something beautiful at the end. I can't explain exactly what it will be. It will be, will be unique for each of us, and it may not be exactly what we envisioned when we began, but there will be something beautiful on the other side. All right, I've included on the show notes a handful of previous episodes and, and blog posts that you might enjoy. One of them is about trusting the transition, something we were just talking about, which was actually episode 225, how to step through and embrace the change you seek and how to recognize the stages of making a lifestyle change. Now I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is an everyday dinner recipe that I was making for myself last week. And it was the middle of the week. I was tired, but I was really happy at the same time. But I was also really hungry and I wanted to get into my kitchen and make something that was simple, delicious, and good for me. And so it was on a Wednesday. And as you guys, many of you, my book lovers out there know, on Tuesdays, new books, new books drop. And I'm not talking about my book here. I'm talking about Michelle Obama's new memoir that arrived at my house last Tuesday. And I hadn't had a chance to start reading it until Wednesday. And so I have this new book that I've been eager to, to read as I ordered it way back in, in last spring. And I also then decided, okay, I know what I'm going to have. Something that I already had in my kitchen, because I already had my epicery stocked, and I could have it made in about 20 to 30 minutes. And so as I shared on my Instagram pic, which I include in today's show notes, the night involved two pleasures, a good book and a simple yet luxurious meal, chicken parmesan and toasted forbidden rice, also known as black rice. And yes, a little bit of white wine was served as well. Now, many readers, after having shared these images in one video from my kitchen while I was making the dinner, wanted me to share this recipe. And so I'd like to share both of those. I won't go into detail here on the show notes, but they are linked on the show notes. But I do want to talk about the health benefits of forbidden rice, um, also known as black rice, as many readers were curious as to what it was. It hadn't, they hadn't cooked with it before, and I cannot recommend it more for a side dish. Not only is it simple, but the health benefits are pretty awesome. So my introduction to black rice um, was on the Oregon coast way back in 2013 um, during one of my stays at the Gearheart Ocean Inn, which is a post that I wrote um, completely unsolicited. I truly enjoyed this first experience there, and I've returned many, many times. And I went to the, the local acclaimed seafood restaurant there, the Pacific Cafe, and I ordered or their halibut and it came with black rice. It was silky, it was flavorful, and it was a perfect bed for the fish that had been freshly caught. I remember that meal in my mind's eye. I have since enjoyed it and always had some in my, my epistory, in my pantry. And since then, I have also learned of the many health benefits that further strengthen my preference for black rice over all other rices. For example, did you know that black rice has the highest amount of antioxidants than any other rice variety? It is also a great source of iron. It's naturally gluten-free and can help reduce heart disease and is a great source of fiber. That's a lot. Um, so it is for those abundance of awesome reasons that I enjoy this particular grain. I've included a link to a list of even more health benefits on the show notes for this recipe. Now, with all of that said, I usually keep it pretty simple in the kitchen when I make a side of black rice, with whether I make it as a bed for salmon or sole meunier or Parmesan chicken, as I'm doing today. It tastes wonderful, toasted in a little bit of butter, finished with a little bit of butter, and flavored with a pinch of salt while it's boiling. That's it. Now, the recipe is simple. I start the black rice in a saucepan with a little bit of butter over medium heat. I toast it for about two to four minutes. And once it's toasted, I add about three cups of water. 
to that and I bring it to boil with a pinch of salt. Once it's boiling, I reduce it to simmer and it simmers for 20 to 25 minutes. While it's simmering, I'm making my Parmesan chicken, which you can make with chicken um, breasts or chicken tenders. Start them by simply tenderizing them with a, the soft side of your mallet to reduce them to half the thickness, then dredge them in flour that's been seasoned with salt and pepper, dunk it in egg wash, and then drench it again in a mixture of panko breadcrumbs and Parmesan. And if you want to, you can add a little bit of um, finely chopped flat leaf parsley. That's it. You put that in a skillet at medium heat, a little bit of olive oil in the pan, three to four minutes on each side until golden brown, and you have your chicken done. The rice, when it's done, you drain the excess water out. You put another tablespoon of butter in the black rice, mix it up until it melts and adds a little bit more flavor, and that's it. I usually add for the third component, I add some roasted vegetables, and in 30 minutes, I have my meal. It's that simple. So this entire recipe is on the blog. Simply go to the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 234. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, very quickly, um, back to Michelle Obama's memoir. I'm still making my way through it, but I've read various parts of it so far. And I've also been reading a bunch of interviews um, and spotlights on the book. And there was a wonderful article shared in the Washington Post. And it was actually about her mother, Marianne Robinson. And it's worth checking out. I've included a link to this article on the recipe page um, that has the recipe I just spoke about. But the part that really captured my attention, there's a lot of great um, details and insights in the interview or in the, the article, is when... Marianne Robinson was sitting with her daughter for an interview with Gail King on CBS recently. And Gail King asks Marianne Robinson a question. She says, what is it about her daughter that she's most proud of? And Marianne Robinson said, when I grow up, I would like to be like Michelle Obama. And be sure to check the article out because Michelle's response to hearing her mother's words of praise is priceless. So I've included a link to that on the recipe post um, that will be linked in today's show notes. All right, guys, before I wrap up today, as promised, I want to share uh, one review of the Simply Luxurious Life's new book, which just came out last week. And I just want to thank you all for, for your support on the day that it came out, your, your comments, your excitement, your celebration. I was just truly overwhelmed and deeply appreciative. Um, reviews have been coming in, although I know many of you are simply savoring this book, taking your time as one reader shared. I am dipping in and out of your book. So much great content and your voice comes through so clearly when I'm reading. A definite petite plaisir. Actually more of a grand one. Thank you for sharing how you are enjoying this book. And I wanted to share a, a, a review that was recently shared on Amazon. This review comes from... H. Kessler, titled Meaningful and Useful, Five Stars. As a longtime blog reader and podcast listener of the author, I was hoping to find new information and inspiration. I was not disappointed. This book is a gem and packed full of ways to enhance our lives and intellect without expensive recommendations. Read it in one sitting or over days. You will truly enjoy every page. Thank you very much, H. Kessler, for sharing your specific review of the book. I will be sharing at least one review each week until the end end of 2018 to give listeners and readers an idea of what this book is all about if you are curious. With that, I hope you have a wonderful week. If you're in the States or around the world celebrating Thanksgiving this week, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with family, friends, or wherever you may be in this grand world. I am very thankful for you, the listeners of the Simple Sophisticate Podcast. I will be back next week with a new episode. Bon journée. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my new book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Everydays Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is available now in paperback, ebook, and audio versions on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, 
or wherever books are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, my new cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.